thanks for coming. <laughs> and uh, so we're here to talk about the new neighborhood composting pods in Hardwick. Um, and ironically, well, we call them neighborhood composting pods. They're really community composting pods. And even if you don't live in the neighborhood, you're welcome to subscribe to it. So um, we've had a lot of folks that commute to Hardwick and have been expressing interest in or wishing they could participate and in fact they can. So uh, if you work at the health center, you could be using the pod here on Creamery Road. Uh, so just to say that before we forget, um, my name's Tom. I own and operate Black Dirt Farm and Jarrett here uh, works on the farm with me as well. And so we're here to help everybody better understand the program, but then also specifically thank our partners. And so for starters, um, this is a program that's supported financially with some help with the pilot program with Central Vermont Solid Waste District. Uh, the town of Hardwick has been a great supporter hosting a site as well as um, providing all sorts of in-kind support in terms of handing buckets out and just uh, promoting the program and just being great collaborators. Um, and then, uh, of course, each of these locations is hosted by a neighborhood member, a community member, um, including Wiz here. And, um, and without the host's willingness to host a site and receive their neighbors onto their property to, to use the site, uh, we wouldn't have a program. So for um, everything else that goes into this and all the great partners, really, the hosts are there day to day letting it happen. And that's um, incredibly appreciated and <laughs> critically uh, central to the whole program. Uh, I think the most important thing that I wanted to sort of draw attention to is these seem um, like small acts to have a small a container here and to be dumping our food scraps in them. But I think the in a moment where we're facing um, challenges that maybe have never been seen at the magnitude and the degree of intersectionality um, and the degree of globalness around like the climate crisis, uh, it's tempting to think that policymakers will be the ones to find the solutions to the problems that we've got, but uh, food scraps and landfills are, are some of the larger contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, and it's only actually in the action of at the household level and then at the community level that we're ultimately going to turn that tide. So uh, I think these are lovely, nimble, um, small programs, but collectively they become part of this bigger network of uh, <clears throat> this bigger network that basically creates an effective outcome. And building on that, you know, not only are we able to keep these materials out of the landfill, but then we're keeping the, the resource base in the community. So there's local people that are running the collection routes that are we're keeping the money in the economy. We're paying people. We're selling eggs, we're eating the food. Um, and it's that piece of sort of tripping a, a circular economy that's uh, the most exciting part of the whole piece. Um, so once we collect these materials, we bring them back to our farm and then that triggers a series of uh, enterprises on the farm that begins with making a forage for our hens. So we raise hens and sell eggs. And that's uh, about mimicking the native feeding strategy that their ancestors, uh, Indonesian red jungle fowl, would use in a wild environment. Um, and then we can make compost that goes into local gardens and then growing crops on the back end of that. Um, and so really beginning here, this is like the watershed of the resource in the community and, and within the food shed. Um, so being able to, to work together and have the collaboration of neighbors and then also the town and the district, uh, you know, it's, it sets off, it creates the scaffold for then this community infrastructure that has all of these other um, benefits that come out of it. Um, so this is a pilot this year. It's a, it's a small um, short-term uh, uh, test. We're, we're launching five sites. Each site hosts about 20 folks. And, um, and so we're in this enrollment period. We're trying to get folks signed up, and the big thing is helping people find which locations work best for them. So there are five locations in Hardwick. Um, and once you figure out which location works best for you, then you can sign up and go from there, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I um, wanted to pause just for a second. Was there anything that either of you would like to say from the town or district perspective? Um, 
just that we're really excited to see this program kicking off and I think it'll be a great thing for the Hardwick community. Cool. I just want to say that I appreciate the work that you're doing with uh, the Solid Waste District and also Black Dirt Farm. And I think it was, um, I was just thinking back, we, we have a little bit of history in mm -hmm. composting. Uh, we, we visited that site in Johnson right. years oh, ago. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you've been in this for a while yep. and I think you're doing a great job. Thanks. So. Yeah. Um, so with respect for time and, and letting everybody get to the meetings they get to, I also, we have some gifts for the, um, the hosts and so Wiz here is, there's some, uh, I should just That's pull this out. Here's some eggs for you, but then we've got, just to acknowledge, uh, we've got some things from Songbird and uh, Village Restaurant and the co-op. Um, and am I forgetting you front seat. And front seat coffee. And then you can take a bag of this and- um, I'll bring those over to the car. Jared will bring those over today. So if you're interested, if someone's interested in, in signing up for a potty, just go to the blackdirtfarm.com website. Um, you go to our services. There's a tab on the website that has residential compost pods on it. You click on that little link there, and it'll bring you down to the to the set of, of sites that we have available. You click on that site, and you enter in your information, and you sign up for that pod. And that subscription runs for three months. So if you signed up today, Three months from now, you'll have another reminder email that will come through. And to renew your subscription, you just click on it and renew it. Um, it's super, super simple. Um, you can pick up a bucket once you've subscribed. They have buckets at the Hardwick Town, uh, town office. You can grab a bucket there. Inside this bucket, there is um, a, a one quart bag of worm castings that we hand out. There is a, uh, a PLU sticker kind of poster. So the PLU stickers on the vegetables and all the fruits, those are like our, our arch nemesis at the farm. So we, we are super into getting those PLU stickers out of the compost stream. So this, uh, this poster is you stick on your PLU stickers and it'll form different words. And it's kind of a fun thing to get involved with the family. Um, there's also um, instructions on what to do with worm castings if you've never used worm castings before. And there is also a poster for your fridge, uh, no, a magnet for your fridge on what to put in and what not to put into the compost bucket. Just so you know, you know, this is the same, the same information is on this sheet as it is on the, uh, on the magnet. Um, and here's the, here's the magnet here. So super simple to sign up and we're, we're, we're gaining some traction. We've had a bunch of folks sign up for um, the East, East Church Street Pod and also the West Church Street Pod. We're at about 50 to 55 capacity on both of those sites. And we're looking to build up the this site and also uh, Central Street. So those those pods are still uh, cranking along, but we want to try and push folks to, to sign up for those as well. And this, this site specifically, easy access? Super easy. Right. In and out, you don't have to deal with traffic? Nope. So. Yeah. For sure. Same is true for Riverside Terrace. Yep. You, know, you just pull up, you know, there's very little traffic on that road. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a loop. Yep. You know, you come in one way and keep going. just keep on going, right? Yep. So, one of the things that uh, Jarrett just mentioned <coughs> is the PLU stickers and it's kind of central to our whole program. The mechanics of this are very simple, right? Collect your food scraps and tip them in here. That's kind of it. Uh, but the thing that's the most important is that uh, ultimately, if this is a, about all of us collaborating to build more resilient and regenerative communities and food systems, plastics ending up in soil is not going to help with that case, that cause. Uh, so we really have a, a, um, a, a very rigorous approach to preventing con soil contamination and, that, and that's really the thing that we're looking for the most partnership in is just really making sure that those PLU stickers are off and if you don't want to use the PLU sticker posters that's just fine but just make sure they don't get in there. Um, you know food packaging at large breaks if it goes through the composting process breaks into microplastics we're all learning about how um, incredibly um, dispersed and prevalent microplastics are. We're learning a lot about how they're carriers for heavy metals into food crops. 
Um, we're starting to find microplastics embedded in food crops. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty shocking, disturbing, and I think something we all want to mitigate. And then where there's microplastics from food packaging, there's often uh, PFAS and these forever chemicals. Um, so we're seeing you know, farms getting shut down in Maine from soil pollution that is showing up now in crops and in milk. Um, and I think as the rest of us haven't found it yet because we haven't been testing. So it, it really requires a, a like shared vigilance to do that. And then the other part is because this, that process I was describing before, our hens have the first shot at this. You know, just for their well-being, we don't want the plastics in there. Uh, they're very curious. They explore the whole world with their beaks. So um, their tendency to sort of grab onto a plastic bag and shake it and potentially eventually rip a fragment off and eat it. Um, it's just not good for them. It's not good for us. It's not good for our soils or the soils of any of you that might use the compost that we make. Some folks uh, may end up wanting to use a countertop uh, container to fill things in and then dump that in the larger container and we can provide both to you. Um, and then when you get to the location um, and you got your container, everything's pretty simple. There's a container for the food scraps and then a container for sawdust to cover that food with. So um, you're just coming up to the container. We ask that you do your best to kind of shake the, the container so it, the food ends up somewhat level in here. And then um, after you tip your food scraps, even though you've done a wonderful job at home separating the plastics from the food, if you notice somebody made a mistake, there's uh, salad tongs right here. Just pop that out, take that home with you. Um, we really appreciate people doing that, aside from, from the piece about protecting soil. Because we're so vigilant about it, our drivers pick these containers if there is trash. And so um, the driver who picks up from these locations, his name is Matt, and Matt would prefer to get through his day without rooting through a bunch of rotting food for your plastic, so out of respect to Matt, use the tongs. After you've tipped the bucket in here, um, there's a container next to them with sawdust in it, and you can just take the, um, the scoop and just generally cover the material. And you know, doing your best to make sure that that, that food material is completely covered. Um, that'll prevent odors, that'll prevent flies, it'll prevent uh, bears or uh, skunks from coming over here. And the cleaner and less uh, odiferous we keep these containers, the, the easier it is to operate the program, the more pleasant for everybody. And then the last thing we just ask is to just remember that, um, you know, this, is, this location is here at the town of Hardwick's um, uh, road crew um, location on Creamery Road, but all the other locations are at uh, individual people's homes and residences. Um, and so, you know, it's just important to remember that you're coming to their home, they're providing a service to the community, and showing up at 10 o'clock at night is inappropriate. You know, um, just come during daylight hours, no yelling and screaming at your kids, uh, try to not make a mess. If you spill something, clean it up. You know, just, just generally being respectful. So all that, uh, all those pieces together, separating the trash from the food scraps, using the site um, properly, and then respecting your hosts is, that's sort of the formula for a successful program. So uh, one, of the, one of the great points of confusion too is in addition to saying no to plastics or metals or styrofoam or glass is these biodegradable plastic products that are now on the market. Um, and without rendering an opinion on the, the products themselves, uh, they're not suitable for this program. So we cannot take biodegradable bags, forks, anything like that that are made out of a biodegradable plastic. We can take anything that's made out of a fiber material like paper, but we can't take the biodegradable plastics. And that's largely because ultimately this material gets blended into this compost blend that our hens forage. Um, and the hens uh, would ingest that and that could harm them. Uh, but then also that is not a, um, it is still a synthetic product. And so it's not suitable for making compost with that's used in organic applications, which is um, what we do. So um, even if you choose to use those biodegradable products elsewhere in your life, uh, they can't make it in here. Some folks do like those um, products for lining their pail, but you actually don't really need to go buy those products. They're rather spendy. If you have a, a paper bag, like a craft paper bag, you can always set that in here and then throw the food in that. 
still needs a rinse then at the end, but it keeps it from getting uh, you know, particularly gross. Um, and if you wash the bucket every week, you really don't need a liner one way or the other.